Thanks very much, uh, Fraser. And uh, thank you to everybody who have uh, come down on one of the few sunny days that we've had uh, uh, this summer. I understand that the uh, icy winds will be blowing down from the north shortly. There'll be flurries of snow, but then there'll be a heat wave for about two seconds, sorry, two weeks uh, following uh, on from this. But thank you for coming. Hopefully, many of you are uh, post uh, a little bit of rest and recuperation uh, from the summer, or you may be looking uh, forward to that. As I say, my name's uh, Dr. Jonathan Fielden. I'm Director of Specialised Commissioning, and uh, I'm now nearly five months into role uh, for this. It was interesting as I walked uh, in here, I noticed that Joseph Conrad uh, lived in a house across the road. For those of you who know Joseph Conrad, he wrote Into the Heart of Darkness uh, for that, and uh, wrote about the trials of uh, the human spirit whilst the inscrutable uh, universe looked on. Not that that was a job description for the Director of Specialised Commissioning, uh, but uh, I would suggest that actually moving into commissioning at this moment and commissioners working with providers is absolutely key if we're going to address the, the many challenges that we have. One of the challenges that we have, particularly in Specialised, was to make sure that we engaged with the provider sector as much as we could. Back in November, some of you may well have been at the event, and these are the feedback, some of the feedback that we got from that event in uh, last November. And this event moves on from that, taking this further forward. Coming in from March, I noted that despite progress having been made and having had the joys of the Public Accounts Committee six weeks uh, into role, uh, testing me over the last three uh, years of specialised uh, commissioning for that, it was very clear that there was a need for the vision and strategy of specialised commissioning coming through and being uh, understood across the health service. So working with uh, the team across specialised, what we did was go out, look at the um, uh, five-year forward view, and then bring together this strategic framework, which is uh, published on the 26th of May uh, on the uh, via the uh, NHS uh, uh, board for that and now we're in the process of taking it out understanding how people feel this fits together the vision very much links absolutely into the five year forward view or should I say into the three and a third year forward view as we, uh, uh, as we are now very much we address the same three challenges the first the health and well being gap improving the population health for specialised, that's actually really quite challenging because many of our patients are either born in with a rare condition or you are so far down a pathway of care that actually you are very much into specialised commissioning prior to being able to get into prevention. Where we are looking is very much in the prevention, precision and personalisation of the specialised treatments, linking into genomics, linking into a much more personalised way of delivering specialised care. In that way, in the first instance, it will be reducing harm, preventing harm. But in some of the areas, and particularly uh, perhaps within the areas such as mental health, if we can direct some of our input further upstream, for earlier on in those interventions, we can get to a point where we'll be reducing the numbers that come through into CAMS tier 4 or forensic services. So really getting into the prevention agenda. But for the majority, this very much is about prevention, precision, and personalization. The second challenge from the uh, five-year forward view is the care quality gap. Bringing specialized commissioning together Across, uh, nationally has addressed many of the issues around variability. There is much more to be done, but the Carter report, that's the David Carter report of 2006, very much criticised specialised commissioning for being fragmented in the way it was delivered at the time. Coming together nationally, we've reduced that fragmentation to a degree and got greater consistency, but what we have done is broken some of the pathways linking much closer to the patient. So one of our challenges around the care quality gap is how we integrate and relink the national uh, standards, the national delivery with those pathways, relinking those pathways closer to patient delivery. We cannot get away from the fact that we all have a challenge around maximizing value, addressing the finance and efficiency gap. And I'll go on to this in a little bit more detail, but specialised commissioning cannot afford, the NHS cannot afford, the country cannot afford, the specialised commissioning budget to balloon. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but we have a challenge together 
particularly working with our clinical leadership, to ensure that we are delivering best value for the £15.66 billion of specialised commissioning money. And within that, also ensuring that we are stopping those things that we know no longer work. How many people in their day-to-day -day work know there are things currently that they are doing in their organisation which they know the evidence is either flimsy or no longer work or could be done more efficiently? Now, either everyone's asleep in the audience or you have perfect organisations. There's nobody who thinks that there is something in their organisation that could be improved. I've got a few nods that may be falling asleep at the front, but in the vast majority of audiences that most people will say, actually, I do know, particularly talking to clinicians, there is something we're currently doing we could do so much better. Within that, that allows us to free up resources and particularly finance to deliver the things we know we'll need to deliver moving forward. So our strategic framework is based around eight uh, uh, parameters. The first three over on the right-hand side, of the, uh, your left-hand side of uh, the, the slide, are around delivering place and population-based care. Working with our sustainability and transformation footprint colleagues, we have asked them, and the first cut of those plans came back in at the end of last month, have been reviewed by Simon Stevens and Jim Mackey uh, during that process. Say, what are the populations that you're interested in? What are those populations related to specialised that you feel you, were, were, you are most interested in working uh, and uh, developing? We'll come, in to, we'll come to that, but those that are most advanced, perhaps uh, Manchester, probably 18 months ahead of most of the sustainability and transformation footprints, they're talking somewhere between 30 and 50 of the uh, 146 prescribed services. They may be interested over one to two years, being interested in devolving. So at least two-thirds of the 146 are likely to remain uh, with specialised. But within that, there are those that quite clearly need to remain national, and there are those that need to be at a more regional or hub level. And I'll give a first cut on what we've been working, looking at what's coming back from the specialised commissioning, uh, from the sustainability and transformation plans, and our work uh, nationally. Once... The population has been uh, that our, special, our sustainability and transformation uh, plan colleagues uh, are interested in is uh, defined. The next challenge we've put is what is your provider configuration? We know that there is a large spread of provider configuration. Specialised commissioning commissions 286 organisations. It was 287 about three weeks ago. It's now 286 because of a, uh, a merger. Of that... 50% is done by 20 organisations. There's a very, very long tail, and I'll allude to that uh, coming through. As a clinician, a very, very long tail, a positive skewed distribution, if you like, to me either says that we've got some extraordinarily really good individuals working on their own, or more likely suggests that you have individuals with ad hoc practice, without the teams around them, without uh, the provision for the patients which is linked uh, close enough to uh, the others that are needed to deliver the highest quality care, and almost certainly at high cost. Bringing that long tail in is something that we need to do, but as we said on the 26th of May explicitly, this isn't the, the 15 to 30 of everyone counts back in 2013. We don't know what that number is, but it is probably smaller, almost certainly smaller than the long tail that we currently see. Then once we've look, got people looking at the population, the provider footprint, what then are the commissioning levers that are needed to be, enable this? Is this prime provider? Is it accountable care? How do we enable these changes to happen at the speed that we need them to happen? So you might say, well, if you're devolving everything out to sustainability and transformation plans, are you doing yourself out of a job, Jonathan? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that I've done that, but no, there is a strong, strong need for the national consistency, particularly around the national clinical leadership. So some of you may well be involved with our clinical reference groups. We've rejigged the clinical reference groups. We now have uh, 42 clinical reference groups, although the specialised dermatology uh, clinical reference group, we have yet to appoint a chair to. 42 clearly being the, um, the number which is the answer to life, the universe and everything, but also is the right number for giving us our clinical uh, reference group leadership. That national consistency, those national standards. But within that, and James Palmer and myself have now been out to meet the vast majority of the new chairs as we move into appointing the membership and the uh, patient and public voice members, to engage, to 
ensure that we've got the right drive and ambition, but also to ensure that the clinical reference groups are also brought into this is delivering value. These are the outcomes and experience for the cost of achieving those outcomes. And understanding actually within their areas of clinical reference, there may well be some things they need to help us stop doing. Stop doing those things that no longer work. Stop doing those things that no longer deliver the value to our patients. One thing that, not unreasonably, we got quite a significant amount of pressure from the Public Accounts Committee. For those of you who know me, I described it as a bit of a kicking. Um, was around our information. Things have improved. They have improved over two to three years, but our business intelligence has to improve further. There's a significant focus this year. For those of you in providers, that does mean, yes, we are very interested in the information you're giving to us. I was shocked to hear that there was a provider that didn't want to share information with the commissioner. That we almost had to go to the point of demanding to go in and going down a legal line of being able to look at some data. Are we not one national health service? Are we not all trying to deliver high quality care for our patients? We have to have good business intelligence and that means getting our information rules right, that means sharing information and if necessary, yes, that does mean using the contractual levers to have the information so we can get the best care for our patients. We need to mainstream treatments quicker. That may well be linking into the Accelerated access review, when that comes off uh, the stocks, we believe later on this year. But more importantly, it is those treatments we know that work, coming in and you know, being accessed by patients. That's someone telling me I'm talking too quickly. <laughs> the last area from National Aid is about ensuring innovation and research. One of the things that struck me coming into specialised commissioning is that we do have a massive opportunity to link to research. One of the joys of working at UCLH um, prior to coming in here, I see one or two colleagues uh, uh, from UCLH, was the fact that there, as in many specialised uh, or, uh, organisations, first in man is just part of the continuity of care for the patient. Your first opportunity to deliver a research first it's just part of that continuity. How can we really, across specialise, maximise that link to research, that link to those innovations? That way we truly can move um, the care to the highest quality for our patients. And then the eighth part of the strategic framework is maintaining financial control. We cannot lose financial control across specialised commissioning. There is nowhere else to go to get more money for specialised commissioning. Some of you may think there is more money coming into public services, just to make sure you haven't gone off to sleep. Anybody think there is more money coming from the government to public services? I can't even see any nods, so you're either all cataplectic. I think it's unlikely, but if there is, we have been very, very clear, Sam Stevens have been very, very clear, Jim Mack is very, very clear, that if there is more money coming to public services, we need to go into social care. That is where we need and that will help the health service, but that's where we need. Should we have fixed social care with that influx? Hand on heart, in specialised commissioning, I feel that extra money should go into primary care. Because that is where we need the investment. So, the specialised commissioning budget, significant, we'll allude to that. That is what we have to deal with. The indicative sums which we'll allude to, that is what we have to deal with, despite the huge pressures from NICE, despite the pressures that are coming through on, no, on new treatments. That is uh, the sums that we deal with. We have to get best value for our patients. So from the launch in May, we've been out and about talking with a large number of people, listening to your comments, and we'll be very interested in uh, comments late, uh, later on from yourselves as well across the day. But what would 2020 look like? 2020 look, um, in 2020, we will be continuing to improve the health of our population, but linked very closely to our local leadership. The national service standards, all patients anywhere in the country can have that same expectation of the highest quality, but it'll have a greater degree of flexibility in delivery so that they can, where appropriate, be uh, delivered closer to home, but moving to those centres where necessary to get that high quality uh, care. And on maximising value, we'll be linking into the new service models, the new delivery, so we can get that quality uh, of care and sustainability within the available resources. 
There are many challenges, but three I would just like to pick out. The place and population-based approaches, ensuring best value, but also research and development opportunities. Those of you involved in the sustainability and transformation plans are involved within this our current process, where we're bringing together both specialized commissioning and wider system planning. To be honest, in some of the sustainability and transformation plans, there is probably three groupings. There is a grouping that really get it, and they've begun the journey with specialized. The majority recognize that specialized is a significant spend, but are only just beginning to understand how. And between now and as we move into September and October, we'll be helping define that and working with you in more detail. Sadly, there is also a third group. And within that third group, they, some have completely ignored specialized commissioning despite a significant spend. That, hasn't, that is something we need to help address. Interestingly, there's also a group within there, and one of the plans that I've uh, looked at had great and significant detail around how to deliver specialized commissioning and the improvements there. It was great ambition, but we did suggest that perhaps first they could look at the needs around A&E, the needs around our, uh, their referral to treatment times, the needs around their provider configuration, and some of the other challenges that they had at basic building blocks prior to sorting out specialized commissioning. We need to get these things in the right order. And we'll be working with you and sustainability transformation plan colleagues um, in four areas in particular to help uh, along that, that journey. So I mentioned within uh, sustainability and transformation plans that even Manchester is thinking around 30 to 50 of the 146 prescribed services which could potentially, over one to two years, be devolved out. At the other end, we're looking at what those particularly rare diseases, and we think we can define this reasonably quickly about those diseases, those conditions, those processes of care which are within specialised, which need to remain national. And over the next couple of months, working through this gap in between, that area that needs regional or a hub approach for that. To the right of the slide, some potential indicative services that might over a period of time, fall into those groups. Nothing is yet decided. These aren't even minded decisions by specialised commissioning. These are the, some of the early ideas that we get and what we're picking up from our, uh, from our SDP colleagues in particular. There is a logic that if every single sustainability and transformation plan within the country comes back to us and says, we would wish to devolve this service, that ultimately we should think about delisting these. We have on a couple of occasions thought about delisting, and it has had a variety of responses uh, to that uh, delisting process. I note a couple of smiles around the audience uh, with that. Maybe a grimace or maybe a smile. If every single SDP in the country says we would wish to commission this locally in a devolved way, there is a logic of us moving towards uh, uh, delisting that through the, the PSAC process. I said that we're working with um, uh, four colleagues, working with South East London, looking at how their sustainability and transformation plan and the cross-boundary flows in particular work in that, uh, in that area. Working with Greater Manchester, as you would expect, probably the furthest along in their journey uh, in this respect towards what can be devolved uh, out. But also, I was very keen to make sure that we didn't just have two big urban areas working with uh, specialised commissioning around the STP process. So we have, uh, we're going to be working with Cornwall and Hereford and Worcestershire as well to see how a more rural sustainability and transformation plan is impacted by working with, sustain with specialised services. There are quite a few, as you may imagine, legal hurdles within this. But we can divide them up into four. Firstly, a seat at the table. Looking at the transformation plans that have come through, we've, as a minimum, been asking, you need to have a seat at the table. I'd be wanting to discuss the issues around uh, specialised commissioning. The next step is really getting into joint commissioning. Significant discussions. We, we remain accountable um, for uh, specialised commissioning, but there is a strong and well-guided discussion with the SDP uh, colleagues around specialised. 
and we'd wish most people to get to this stage. Increasingly, and in those most advanced, there will, and then there are some legal uh, barriers to overcome, be moved towards delegation. We remain accountable, but the decisions become more delegated to STPs. And then, right across to the right, devolution. Full devolution. As I suggest, those most advanced in this are still suggesting it's only about 30 to 50 of the 146, which over one to two years will get to this devolution stage. So two-thirds of specialised commissioning remaining national. That's a scoot over the, uh, the place-based care aspects. We have to ensure best value. These sums look huge. Any of you who do the maths between here and here will note that there is a significant greater amount in real terms going to specialised commissioning than going into primary care. These percentage increases are significant, but they get tighter. Of this 7%, 4.3% is directly this year for the pressures coming from NICE. If we don't control those pressures coming through from NICE, and we're working extremely well with NICE colleagues uh, for this, we have a major issue. The biggest single financial risk to the NHS this year is hepatitis C. If the hepatitis C budget blows this year, and it, on some of the estimates, we, when we're coming into this year, could well have done, it would have been an extra 300 million plus that we had to find from within the specialised commissioning budget. 300 million, to put it in context, I'm sure most of you realise, is the annual budget of a fair size acute hospital. We had to have levers around that to make sure that we were delivering and treating those who most need of care, but also ensuring that the rest of specialised can continue to be delivered as well. And these difficult discussions, difficult challenges are things that we will need to continue moving forward. We won't get away from difficult challenges with the budget, even with these sort of increases. The pressures from NICE, the pressures from new ways of doing things will continue. That does mean we need to work very closely with our clinical colleagues doing those things which are most useful for our patients, deliver the best value, outcomes and experience for the cost of achieving those outcomes. In ensuring best value, I alluded earlier to this positive skewed distribution. This is that uh, distribution. About 20 do half, 80%. This is a particularly long tail. Oops, sorry for that. A particularly long tail. We have to work on bringing that tail in to ensure we've got best quality. That is difficult. That is really challenging. We are in the midst of doing some of that already. But we need to do more to ensure that we can deliver best value for our patients moving forward. As I draw to a close, I want to come back to the opportunity around research, innovation and development. With the information we have, with the joined up nature of the NHS that we have, and yes, we do need to join it up even more, there is massive opportunity around research. We can lever that an awful lot more than we currently do. In a small way, one of the things we're doing with our clinical reference group is to have a designated person that is linked into the NIHR program. We would wish to hear very much from organisations that how we can work with you within the budget and the resources that we have to maximise the opportunities in this area. Particularly though, not just the randomised clinical control trials and clearly the areas where we're working with others such as NIHR, Wellcome, MRC, etc. But also in the areas of how we deliver, how we get better pathway design, how we get better precision and personalisation. How we can share the data we both have together to get the best outcome for our patients. I've skipped reasonably quickly through because I know we want to get on to other areas of the agenda. But I hope you can see that specialised commissioning very much is linked to the five-year forward view, linked to addressing those challenges, but focused on ensuring that we get best value care for our patients, improving those outcomes, but being mindful that we have a significant challenge, even on the size of budget that we have, in continuing to do that at the level that our patients expect. And we, together with our clinicians, 
and uh, managerial colleagues across the service wish to deliver.